For generations, race-based medicine has altered the way patients get treatment. I mean, take Dr. James Marion Sims, known as the father of modern gynecology. In developing his surgical techniques, Sims experimented on enslaved black women without anesthesia. Popular rumor at the time being black women didn't feel pain as intensely as white women. While there has been progress, the National Institute of Health shows black women are still systematically undertreated for pain, and when it comes to childbirth, are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women. The CDC cites quality health care, underlying conditions, structural racism, and implicit bias as factors. So what do we do? A collective of local birth workers say representation and understanding could make the difference. Day One Doula Collective is a community-based doula program located right here in Grand Rapids, where we recruit and train women of color who have a desire to become a community-based doula. And then in turn, those folks are out in community serving families. I always wanted to be an OBGYN, so I thought I wanted to deliver babies. Um, but then I became pregnant and I got to see that it was not as hands-on as I would like to be. You know, the quick 15 minute, visits and I didn't know that I actually wanted to be a doula and I remember Kiara when she launched her bump to birth doula services and I know she had the city buzzing. So when we think about equity um, and specifically health equity we know that these particular communities you know are having really difficulty um, in accessing doula just training. So for us, we wanted to remove that barrier and provide the training completely at no cost. We also provide stipends to our participants because we know that most of our folks are already operating in caregiving roles. So to ask them to then step outside of that and then come take care of your community is a lot to ask of our folks. In relation to uh, the maternal mortality and morbidity rates, um, locally, women are still three to four times more likely to die in comparison to their white counterparts. For black women in particular, our babies are often born too small, too soon, and we often don't have the resources necessary to be able to have safe spaces where we can talk about the things that we're experiencing in these clinical settings or just out in community. I was pretty young, I was 21 when I first had a child, and I didn't really know too much about the experience or the birthing process. So my first experience was horrible. I got this not so nice nurse. Um, she didn't listen to me when I told her I was in pain. She kind of just like ignored me. And then it was like, I didn't have any like time to like make any other decisions because they got me there and it was kind of like they were gonna do whatever they wanted to do. So my son's heart rate ended up dropping twice. The room just got really, really quiet because I told my doctor from day one, like, I really don't want to have a C-section, but if it comes down to the point of where it's life or death, I'm gonna have to have a C-section. I had no idea about the laws, my rights, and I was a little bit confused. So I felt like next time around, if I did decide to have a baby, I would need more support in and out of the laboring room. We really create this experience where they have this menu of options and they get to pick and choose what they would like. Um, and a lot of that conversation is surrounding, you know, what type of care provider would you like? Do you have any care providers that you have had an experience with that you think would be a good fit for you during this time? Do you feel comfortable in saying, no, this isn't a good fit? Day One Doula Collective was actually brought to me by uh, one of my caseworkers that I had as a support system through the WIC office. She thought it would be in my best interest to have that extra support. It's extremely important simply because a lot of women don't know that they have the right to say no. There's that pressure because a lot of women are either there alone or they don't have supports. This might sound a little cocky, but I actually like when I walk into a hospital and then they sit up straight, you know? So, because they know that we know, we know what can be done. We hit it off right away. Immediately when I met her, I was just like, her vibe is just different. Like I could just tell. So I hugged her like immediately as soon as I met her. Like I didn't even know her 
like this is our first time seeing each other and I gave her the biggest hug because I'm like, you're here to help me, this, that, and the third. You know, you can become nervous sometimes. You know, are they gonna like me? Are we gonna click? And it was so natural and I appreciated that so much. I don't know if we were like on the same brainwave or something, but she just knew like the stuff that I would ask for, she knew without me even telling her. Like I remember my lips got really, really chapped and I was like, man, I forgot my chapstick. She had chapstick. And then I started itching. She had lotion, she had everything. I initially wanted a vaginal birth the first time around. The second time around, I got a vaginal birth. The last time I kind of felt like I was kind of forced into things. This time it was kind of like I got to be the ringleader of my experience. It's just amazing to be able to witness her in that element and actually have her fulfill what she wanted to fulfill. So it's a proud moment, <laughs> you know, it, it was all amazing. I always like to joke that our families never fall off. So we really are walking alongside them throughout their entire journey. We've gone to kindergarten graduations. We've gone to baby showers. We've gone to high school graduations. Still to this day, I can call her and ask her questions. She helps me a lot when it comes to breastfeeding. She comes and check on this little guy quite a bit to make sure that he's doing good developmentally. So it's been a great experience. We know that with black and brown community members, having them go into a clinical space isn't always safe. So we wanna make sure that they, again, have access to support services that are needed for them. I really hope in the next five years that we have some of those safety net services in place for our families and communities. I wouldn't mind building a, a doula legacy and just keeping it going and continuing to inspire other black women or women of color as a whole. Opportunities have been amazing. I've literally met amazing women and I feel like I'm becoming a better woman just being around women who are doing the work. There is no such thing as having too much support. So if you feel like you're overdoing it, don't. Take in the knowledge, the education, and just decide what benefits you personally. You don't have to follow everybody's rules. You get to set the tone for how you want your experience to be. Doulas of color are spreading in West Michigan, such as How You Birth Doula Initiative in Muskegon and Rooted Birth Justice in Kalamazoo. But big news happened this year when the state of Michigan approved doula services to be covered by Medicaid insurance, expanding access to care 